Yo, what is good? Still spinning podcast. What's good? It's your boy Steven Selly, the host. I think this is episode 71. We got the new digs. If you're watching the video podcast, I got my own picture that I created of Miami Beach, edited that, and then I also got a present for Christmas. That's me, Duncan. Hashtag Dunk Life. It's pretty dope if you're looking at the studio. Anyway, what's good? Still spinning. The earth is still spinning. And the point of that is that we got to raise our awareness. We kind of got to be conscious of that. So that way helps us raise our consciousness to be the best person we can be because I believe the more you know about yourself, the more you can enjoy this life and that's what I'm all about. So welcome and also dunking. So dunk training today, we had a special guest. I've been meaning to talk to this guy for a long time. I'm really happy that I got to finally sit down and talk to him, get to know him a little more and it was just awesome. He's Chuck Milan, creator, founder of Team Flight Brothers. It was really awesome to have him on. We talked a ton about T-Dub. If you don't know who that is, definitely go get your dunk knowledge up. What are you doing? Uh, yeah, we talked about how he created Team Flight Brothers, how he got his first dunk, uh, where he thinks dunking's going, about the dunk community nowadays, and just a lot more about different contests, possibly getting dunking into the Olympics. It was awesome. So I look forward to having him back on. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Uh, if you want to help me out, you can rate the podcast that helps a lot you can subscribe to the podcast on itunes and spotify and soundcloud i think and google play and stitcher that's the other one and google play i believe but watching it on youtube if you're listening it's on youtube and video uh yeah subscribe to my youtube help your boy out i'm on patreon do whatever you can bro i love doing this and it would be great to just do it full time right now i'm in my friggin' apartment but Everything's feeling great. I'm happy with everything I'm doing. I dunked a little bit today or went training at least a little today. I'm going to be dunking in the in about a week probably, getting all healed up. So that's my life. I guess I'm good. this is turning into another podcast. But uh, anyway, enjoy the episode. A lot more content coming, a lot more podcasts coming. The Zoom application is freaking awesome. So if you want to sponsor me, <laughs> let's get it. Uh, if you actually want to sponsor me, let me know. Hit me up. I'm, I'm looking for sponsors for my podcast to help me support what I do. Uh, I love doing this. I love helping you guys out and I love sharing all my information as I go through my little life coaching training I'm learning so much about the brain and really amping up my life to the maximum if you know me I have a ton of energy I also could talk a lot as you can tell right now hence I have a whole podcast okay that's it enjoy the episode let me know what you think definitely have a lot more guests coming on that I'm really really excited about stay tuned thank you for watching thank you for listening I love you all enjoy your life let's go I'm easily fascinated. I'm feeling so creative. It's your boy Stevie. I'm a planet Earth native. I'm enjoying all the moments because it's such a thrill living. And I'm not sure if you notice. Listen up, we're still spinning. All right, we're live. What's good, Chuck? What up? <laughs> not much What's going on, man? Good to see you. Good, good to have you on. Good to see you. I'm happy to finally be on here. I know after, we've had this for after a like while. a year and a half of just like <laughs> just putting it off. I know, man. Well, I want to get into that because you mentioned you had something coming up, but I'll let you get into that afterwards. Um, first of all, I just want to see how you're doing. What I see you training lately. Tell me a little bit about that. Man, I just... Am I allowed to cuss on here? Or no? Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Okay. What does okay, matter? Man. So what happened is like over the course of a couple of years, man, I just, just got fat as shit, man. And it was just, <laughs> I was like unhealthy. And I was just like, you know, the road stuff and not eating good, wasn't feeling good. Uh, so I was like, I saw, I stepped on a scale and I was like, nah, man, that's not good. <laughs> so probably since like November, I've lost, uh, 50 pounds 51 pounds as of today so Damn, dude just like just trying to get healthy i'd like for to, sure uh, man i'd like to jump every once in a while again but i'm still just trying to get the body ready for like anything did like you that. did you dunk that last day we spoke or you didn't get the dunk yet no man, no i didn't even try because my knee was like a little sketchy yeah so I, I'd just rather sit it out than like take the chance. Dude, I, yeah, I know the deal. I was sat out today trying to do the same thing just because every, 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 it's always one thing. I have like a hamstring issue now, but my knees are finally healthy. But yeah, it's cool to see you back trying to get Duncan. Anyway, that leads me to my first question, which was when was your very first dunk? Uh, my very first dunk was, uh, it was February 8th, 1998. <laughs> <laughs> I was in eighth, I was in eighth grade. Uh, that's the first time I ever dunked a basketball by, at Bonita Springs Middle School. Uh, and it was like within like a couple of weeks because I had never tried to touch the rim before like I think like December because back then I was like only guys on TV can like dunk right. or whatever. 
and I like accidentally touched the rim during a game. He was like, what the hell? And my coach told me, he was like, try to dunk a couple times. And I tried, lob, off the lob, one foot, one hand. Really? And then, so, I did, then I didn't dunk again for like six months. But really? it was like, yeah. But so just yeah, hope, was, so how tall tall were you then? About the same height? I, or? I mean, on it, no, I was shorter. I was probably like five, six or something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure because I like, I think back then I was like, oh, I want everybody to think I'm taller. So like, yeah. I never like got measured so if i was like five six then i'd be like yeah i was five ten and right pretty much what <laughs> so I right so just hooping you just touched the rim one time and that kind of just well, intrigued I you went up, i went up to block someone uh and my hand hit the rim and i was i was like what the hell i was like that yeah. really just happened but i already was like a, a sick dunk nerd mm-hmm. like already like my you know my poor parents like bought me probably like four different basketball hoops i was always hanging on them and stuff but you know so that's like it just like kind of fit into everything that i already loved and shit that's awesome so when you got your first one did it like and six months later were you trying or you didn't really think that it was a fluke i tried i tried so much and i think i just got a (laughs) perfect lob right and like maybe there was like some girls that I had like crush on in the gym <laughs> right. or something like that, but it just like happened perfectly. And I was like, holy shit, like that just happened. So then everyone, I remember I got home from school that day and my brother, he's a couple years older than me, he was in high school. This is a little town, Bonita Springs, Florida. So I like got home and he like woke up from his nap or something. And he's like, did you dunk today? <laughs> and he didn't even go to my school. So it was like everybody knew. So wow. everybody wanted to see me dunk. Yeah, and, and there's I no... didn't dunk again. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't dunk again for like until that summer. So and I'm sure like, you didn't videotape that first one. Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, I, I, do, <laughs> I, I do have some of those. I do have some of those camera tapes around here, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like, but I would have had to have like a big, big guy yeah. on the shoulder. But no, that's. So we didn't start like filming anything until it was like late pool. Yeah. So, so you got your first one, and then were you hooked, and you just see how far you can take it, or? Yeah. Well, I was hooked before that. So yeah. I used to dunk like low rims all the time, and I was like, I just always loved dunking. Like my first memory that I can think of, like as a child, isn't like my parents, like <laughs> you know whatever. It was a dunk contest. It's yeah. like my first memory of you know when i was younger so i like obviously wanted to all the time uh but i just kind of like studied the way everybody jumped uh so i like could figure out like what would be the easiest way for me to dunk if i'm smaller and whatnot so like yeah i was absolutely hooked and i'd go and find like nine and a half foot hoops and mm-hmm. just, you know find nine foot hoops and be like man if i was the same height as stro miles swift yeah. this is what it would be like you know what i mean like just did you just did- random shit like that did you have a favorite dunker in the NBA or even out of the NBA when you were younger before you could dunk? He's, Harold Miner was my favorite dunker Interesting. in the NBA. Uh, I just love Harold Miner, like just the power. You know, he was left-handed, so it looked sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's him. And then, you know, I'm from Florida, so we knew about Vince Carter. Uh, and then Ronnie Fields is like, that was, I would like... <laughs> This was when the internet was like dial up. I would like mm-hmm. find out things about Ronnie Fields. And I just see pictures. I didn't know shit of, you know, I never saw a video besides like a 10 second clip, but yeah. those were the three guys. It was like Harold Miner, Ronnie Fields, Vince Carter. That's awesome. So then you're in high school. Were you playing in high school? Yeah, I played in high school a little bit. Uh, I just, you know, school wasn't really like for me and stuff. I was just like the kid. Yeah. I, you know, I got referrals for like hanging on the room and stuff. It's, so it's funny, it like, yeah. But yeah, I play. But dunking in games and stuff. Yeah, I had a couple. My, I had a, a, a fair share of game dunks. I wasn't like a friggin' stud, like yeah. just you know catching five dunks a game or anything like that. But I caught a couple. I have a few that I got like a year ago on VHS, but I just haven't had anything to confirm them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like need to get off my lazy ass and like figure that out. Yeah, that I mean, I would love to see that. So, high school dunking in games, got your first dunk, and then tell me how it kind of transitioned, or did you find people around that started dunking? How did this start? Yeah. Okay, so there was a kid that this is like junior year of high school, and this is by the time my the end of my freshman year, I could dunk consistently and whatnot, mm-hmm. and every once in a while, like I could squeeze in like a nice dunk. 
So like sophomore, junior year come along and I was doing windmills and like pump reverses. And mm-hmm. at the time, you know, I'm a fucking artifact. Like I'm yeah. an old man, so <laughs> it was sure. like cool back then. Yeah. Uh, it was me and then there was a kid uh, that went to Cape Coral High School named Tim Lowe, who we I know would, like we would hear about each other and like immediately I hated his guts because they were like, <laughs> he did a 360 windmill. I'm like, I'm like, fuck that yeah. guy, no he didn't. So then one day, like, my cousin and my uh, and his you know two two of my cousins one was friends with tim and then one went to school with me it was like we're setting this up we're having a dunk session or whatever so it was my junior year we went and had a dunk session and i'm talking about i had one of the best jumping days of my life like i'm Perfect. just like i'm just first try lob windmills just punching them first time i ever did off the backboard windmill wow this, this guy fucking crushed me <laughs> like <laughs> I'm talking of about like he's like and this is 2001 so you gotta think about it Vince Carter and Jameel Pugh did between the legs like the year before that he's doing 360 between the legs like he did it in front of me and I was just mm-hmm. like what the fuck just happened yeah. and so we weren't like party guys in high school uh, we would go and break into gyms and just dunk till like 2 or 3 in the morning like wow. our hands were all beat up but that's like how it like got us going into like trying different dunks and then it right. was like it's like oh shit like something else is happening here and then the internet comes in right and shit gets like out of control yeah. so i gotta ask when was the first time I mean, this just came to my mind when was the first time you saw t-dub in person <laughs> okay so in person it was uh in lowell massachusetts i actually here's the story behind it Go ahead. if you don't mind I'll no I, I i would love to hear it so I did a couple games against the A and one team, okay. uh, like playing on the other team with the guys that they just like destroyed. Yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, I was like the guy that was like, Perfect. I'm better a professor. You yeah. can't jump. And then like realistically, it was like, no, son, he'll mm-hmm. destroy you. So one of the guys on the team, I forget his name, it was a dude from DC. Uh, he told me, he was like, there's this kid in Minnesota. It's like 17 years old, 18 years old jumps out the gym so i got his name from one of the guys from the coach mike ellis for the other team he's like yeah man and it's on there it says the the otis turner so all right download the thing and mind you i'm 22 what did the name say sorry the otis turner i'll always remember this and i we were just talking about the other day when i saw him so i looked for this guy and mind you we didn't have like the crazy internet back then Mm -hmm. but i could download like an app or a thing on the computer that would you know i'd pay 50 bucks to find like somebody with this last name (laughs) so i find the otis turner okay like hey man i'm starting this thing flight brothers blah blah blah. and he was like so who the fuck you looking for i was like i was like you're the guy dunking at the and one open run he's like oh man you talk about double up like let me I'll get you connected with him. He's, okay. He was only 17. He used my ID. So, yeah. Oh my God. So then finally, uh, I connect with somebody with T Dub's last name. It's his uncle that he hasn't talked to in years. He's like, You're looking, you're looking for you're looking for Terrell? Yeah. <laughs> like for what? It was like, I want him to dunk. Like I want to, you know, do some stuff. It's like, all right. I get on the phone with T Dub and I'm like trying to explain what I'm trying to do. <laughs> and he's like, So you're telling me. You're gonna fly me out there, and I'm just gonna dunk. And you're gonna give me some money. I was like, "Yeah, man." He was like, "He was like, all right, that's what's up." He was like, "I've never been on the plane though. Maybe I'll drive." I was oh like, "Oh my I'll god!" Just, I was like, "I'll fly you, man." Yeah. He was like, "All right." I pick him up from the airport. He's just like, "Man, that shit was cool." Man. Yeah, he was. Cool, <laughs> yeah, but that was the first time like I I met Tito mm-hmm. when I flew him out when I was working three jobs in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh. And like it was, it was crazy. And there's like, it was a good time and like the most tragic events ever. It was like that's uh, wild. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so before when you first met him in person, had you ever seen him dunk yet, or you only heard of him dunking? I, I saw him on the ESPN show on. on oh Street. wow! But it wasn't like he wasn't like not the last one where a lot of people seen. It was one where he just like went baseline and dunked on someone. Yeah. They're like, yeah, he's like five six, and he's like more like five eight, five nine. Like yeah. I think usually 
I mean, everybody knows. I put yeah. people like an inch shorter. It's quick yeah. bait, whatever. Yeah. And it's just like, he's, he's probably actually like five. I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you, when you contacted T-Dub, was he one of the first people you tried to recruit for Team Flight Brothers? Nah, or like, how did Team what? Flight Brothers start? Where did that start? Okay. So this goes back to when I got out of high school, there was a lot of buzz on the internet about me and Tim Lowe. Tim Lowe, the buzz was real. About me, eh, not as, <laughs> like I wasn't that guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we did stuff with Slam Nation and whatnot. Uh, but I was like trying to start like my own group or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so we play, Tim and I played in a game in Fort Lauderdale at Dillard High School. And some, you know, some lanky ass kid the big ass afro comes out wants to dunk against him kid does like a lob between the legs this is in 2005 so that was yeah. like crazy tim destroyed him too wow <laughs> but it ended up it ended up being worm and that oh. was the first that's the first time i met worm so okay it was it was worm uh it was worm myself tim there was this kid robert parker who lives in orlando now hmm. this kid uh, Mark that lives in Orlando now and wow. we were just like we were just trying to like figure something out man I don't yeah. know it was just like fun at the time and we didn't, I didn't have bills yet yeah. you know so it was like yeah let's try to make this happen but it, the original was like Worm Worm was like the first one that's still around now so you're that's cool so you kind of just decided to try to make a team and kind of compete against other people or was there like any business behind it it wasn't so much like it was more like halftime shows and hobbies. So okay. we wanted, like I was like boys and girls clubs. That was like our first like shows with boys and girls clubs in like 2004, mm -hmm. the, like before T-Dub was there. So we would do like YMCA's and boys and girls clubs. So that's what it was. Uh, and then it was like when I went with Slam Nation, I was like, man, like, you know, there's some guys there that were fucking crazy. But then I was thinking, I was like, man, like Worm's gonna be really good in a couple of years, and Tim could probably just take care of business here. <laughs> so, yeah. like, it was just like it opened my eyes to like the avenues it could go. Because I was still a kid wanting to dunk, and that's like when I kind of had to make a decision: like, am I gonna be the try to be a dunker, mm -hmm. or am I gonna try to facilitate these guys, like, mm. you know, being the bigger picture? Yeah. So there's there was a time when you were dunking like was it China or Japan yeah. I don't even yeah, I so, did I did uh, I did Paris uh, what was it Shanghai and Taipei uh, Taipei Taichung is like a couple cities in, in Taiwan and that's that was like my like you know year of dunking and stuff which was awesome it was, yeah so know, that, what, it, where did that come from you just got like uh they kind of saw some videos or they so they saw videos of tim and i it was like it's just like such a it was a traumatic time like because i was 19 uh and i was you know the the company it was jeremy uh medina who's now he's uh what is it go bears agent mm. now uh, and I run into him every once in a while, but he hit me up. He was like, Hey, like, we want to bring some Americans with us. You know, would you and Tim want to go? It's like, yeah, absolutely. Tim didn't show up like completely flaked. What? Still, it's still my guy to this day, but he knows like every time it gets brought up, I'm just like, you bastard. I was 19 <laughs> and I get on a plane to my Miami to freaking Taiwan. Oh my God. And I'm just like, man, like what the fuck is going on? But so they brought us out there uh i went out and dunked with them for like five shows immediately like <laughs> i get off the plane i go straight to the to the place to dunk and like a couple things like threw me off but like obviously the biggest thing was like there was like jan and bryce the blame steve labelle abdul bamba kador ziani and serge mogula i saw bryce jump Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> like, it, was like, right. it was like, I was like, man, I'm not that. Like, so that was like, that was like the eye opener. Like him and like LaBelle, I was just like, man, there's no way like I mm -hmm. can deal with this. Because those guys, they were consistent and they just jumped out the gym. It was like the first time I, I thought Tim was like the highest jumping dude on the earth. Right. And I was like, 
this guy is shorter than me and yeah. doing this shit. Like, wow. So that was like, it was really intimidating and I was shook for like yeah. two shows. I'm, I probably made one dunk in two shows. Yeah. And they were like, who, they were like, who's this garbage guy? And then right. after that, it got a little better, but it's still like, I was nowhere near their, their level. Right. So That's that, rough. It, it was tough, man. I'm 19. I'm just yeah. like, damn it. Like this was my chance, but then yeah, like other opportunities came after that. But mm-hmm. it was just like you got to make that decision, like whether you're going to go this way or this way. And yeah, you know, I I feel like I made the right decision. Yeah. So so then when you came back and you kind of made that decision, did you have like a game plan in mind or any like goals and had in mind or no, not at all. It was just like there was there was nothing there. Like even that avenue wasn't like. Even before I got out there with Slam Nation, I didn't know who they were. Uh, I was just like, all right, this is dope. Like, I saw pictures of them. Yeah. And it was on a, on a website that's Ronnie Field's Sacred Temple. So mm-hmm. I'd see, I'd see uh, pictures, and I'm just like, man, that looks crazy. But I didn't know until I got there. They had DVDs and stuff. So they had already right. been, like, doing stuff. You know, Kador always puts the stuff online. They were, you know, the original, the original guys, but... It was just like, I just felt like it could be like so much bigger. Mm-hmm. And like, for some reason, like what they're, what Jeremy was doing, I was like, I think I can do this better. Mm-hmm. And I guess there was like a competitive thing that came in me that I was just like, man, like I can, like I can do, I can put guys together and run this thing a little, you know, different. That's- that's really cool. Uh, I just had a thought. Um, are there any from the original guys, maybe T Dub or Worm, that were anybody in the original crew when you were running pickup games that you weren't filming that you remember a dunk that you wish you had on tape? Anything like that? I'm sure there's plenty, but anyone that stand out? Couple. Okay. So, <laughs> so we're doing a City of Palm show in 2007, and you know, I'm at the time I'm not like so much like of a manager or a boss i'm like their boy so mm-hmm. i'm like t up fucking we're done jumping man we got a practice session in this was bama's like first time there and bama's like yo i'm not gonna jump and he didn't jump at all so and i just i wasn't even there for this either so i left i was like all right i trust you you're not gonna jump and burn your leg <laughs> he absolutely did so i guess he played in the game and it's confirmed from like bama i'm not sure if nils was there or not nils might have been there or he might have heard about it with me, but uh, T Dub's brother and like a couple other guys, like the original guys, they were like, "Yo, T Dub caught a rebound, and jumped over two fucking people, man!" <laughs> like cleared them, and like oh. I guess the whole gym went crazy. And he dunked like shit that night. Oh uh, my god! He jumped himself out. Uh, but then another one, we were in Lowell, and it was me, Danny Ford, who was 4D, and Team Flight Brothers, and Jimmy, and. and I had the camera set. We had everything going. I'm talking about like everybody was dunking. Like I even had one in this freaking game. <laughs> and this dude, I uh, I like drove to the lane. I go up like I'm going for a layup, and I just bounced it. Uh-oh. And you just see Jonesy come flying in. Oh. And we, mind you, we're the only three white dudes at yeah. the park. He catches this dude, lays out on him, and just like. The whole place, it looked like somebody was shooting up the park because everybody ran out. <laughs> we go home that night, we watch the video, and it's there. So we're yeah. just like, yeah, that's awesome. So then we decide we're going to go out and have some fun that night. We went out, we come back home, somebody pressed record and recorded over the whole fucking thing. What did they record? Another it, game or just the by accident? No, just the wall. Just the wall. Oh, no, my God. So to this day, like, Jonesy and Danny Ford, like if you just like say to him, say to him, you're like, hey, the lost tapes. They're just like, oh, yeah. Because Danny even had one that was crazy too. Yeah. Like, when Damn. Jonesy laid out on someone. Dude, the so, Jonesy ones, um, I, when his game dunks are some of the most vicious. Like the way he took off on. Oh my god. It's just it's crazy with him because he's like, there's like certain times where he just like wasn't like jumping, and then all of a sudden in the game, it's just like what. What just yeah. happened, dude? Like yeah. he, he, like that. He was always tricky. Apparently, he still is, man. You know. Yeah. At forty-two years old. Yeah, his game dunks were crazy, inspiring to me, and also just like 
I've always wanted to dunk on people the way he does. And like the left, right, the way he does is just nasty. Um, So moving on a little bit from the past to the future, do you have any favorite dunkers right now or any people you're most excited for? I know that's kind of a loaded question. Yeah. But... Super loaded. Um, <laughs> man, I love Antonio, uh, you know, teeth lying. Mm-hmm. That kid, there's been a lot of people I, I like try to pride myself on like, getting people their first flights and first like mm-hmm. you know their first like time seeing like what their abilities can do for them he came to new york when we did a thing with nike and he like not only he's a great kid but this kid's the real fucking deal man yeah he's like been, he, um he's been progressing super fast well he's jumping on concrete all the yeah. time man it's concrete That's, and rubber, so he yeah. got on like wood floor. He was like, "Man, this is crazy. This yeah. is crazy, man." How tall is he so, again? He's uh, I think he's like six three. Okay, something like that. Either six three or six four. But Dude, he yeah. like he's consistent, man. He like he gets up. Um, I mean, I don't I don't put like Isaiah and CJ in that anymore. Like they they're there already. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I. There's, I guess there's like two main. Yeah, I have a follow up. Who, who, who do what? I? Hmm. I don't know. It's just, it's, it is tough. I, I asked you because I know it's like kind of your job to kind of know who's up and coming. But um, I'm like, I'm all about the people that are just working their butt off. So even like, because for me, I know I like my own experience is taken forever. So when I see people make any type of progress, it's just hype. Yeah. And when I see that they're super hype about just landing a new dunk or just not stopping and working every detail, that's what I'm about. So Isaiah, it's like he started his YouTube up again. So it's just so fun to watch his training. Yeah. I know, um, I just talk to a lot of the dunkers all the time. Jay Clark's like putting in so much work and even Chase, it's fun to see Chase kill again and put it up, get up again. Like he's been injured yeah. a lot. So just see, I like seeing people come back because it just shows that they're real dedication. And even Jordan kill and like he's just still doing it everybody it's just there's so many coming up too it's just fun but my, my follow-up yeah. question was um since you're kind of the guy that people like people look for for um opportunities what would you have as advice for some of these young dunkers that are on instagram if they're trying to stand out is there anything that you could give them well i mean it's like crazy like because you know, i obviously get a lot of dms and stuff and people being sure. like check my stuff check my stuff but Really, like in that sense, nothing's is ch- nothing's changed with me. I yeah. look at the hashtag dunks fucking three times an hour. Yeah, like I know like what's going on. Um, honestly, obviously the dunks are gonna be crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, work on your like couple dunks that are consistent. Like, get five consistent dunks that you know can wow people. Uh, but honestly, at this point, like I'm an old man now. Like, yeah. <laughs> just be a good person like mm-hmm. be encouraging to other people like all the like bullshit when people go back and forth it's like i see that and i'm just like yeah I just like swipe out of there i don't i don't like it uh it's just like you know we're here like a lot of people have this like awesome gift and this like great you know ability to like possibly be the there's so many people that could be the best dunker in the world mm-hmm. you know what i mean it it's, it's really it's, cool like, people are just like what people are like hitting each other i'm like ah. yeah like, it's on. it's Let's actually i'll do all right yeah it's actually a pretty positive community from what i see i'm sure you see the same thing it's like a lot of people are really hyped for everybody working it's like there's very little of the back and forth but compared to like a lot of other things on social media the dunk community is pretty positive it is you know like with guy with so i mean i think everybody just calls it your group of guys you guys yeah. have a solid group that you guys yeah. have come up the past like four or five years and that like is like crazy because mm-hmm. i'm used to the other group of guys yeah. that just like with you guys it's like you're happy for the you know for like isaiah does great cj is like man i'm so happy for him and stuff yeah now when like other guys like obviously like sometimes you see people just be like yo man I'm like fuck that guy i'm better yeah. than him. it's like whatever all right like i mean even like jordan and gee would go at it and it'd just be like yo man like like just chill the fuck out yeah i mean so that's like um i had another question about contests because these contests we know nba contests how they work you're a master at it it's pretty evident um but is there 
a, a style of contest you think would because i've been discussing with the, um, all the people on instagram and things like that it's it's tough to judge a contest with somebody that's short for somebody that's tall if they do the same dunk if somebody jumps way higher what would you say is a good way to judge a contest is there a good just, way so when like all is said and done like the ultimate goal is you know olympics mm -hmm. so i think like something should be like put in with you know a 1.0 to a 10.0 with different categories, power, originality, style. Uh, and I think that's how it should be judged. Uh, obviously, it's like every, people know the tricks, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's push-offs, there's like all that stuff. But when it comes down to it, people will be like, push-offs suck, like this sucks. And then when it comes to the contest time, it's like, damn, I need to do a push-off. Yeah. Because the crowd's it's... gonna react. So yeah. it's just like, I guess it, there's really no right answer. Like I obviously like would love to see things more original. Like unfortunately in other contests, like I judged like city slam, and even Dunkley, the first one, there would be dunks and like for city slam. It's like, you got to like act like you, you know, this is the first time you're seeing it. Yeah. And now, like, fortunately I'm in a different place where now like the next dunk league, uh, I can be like, listen, you've been doing that for six years, fucking six, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so I guess like originality, it's just like tough. It's a lot. It's tough. It's, it's tougher than it looks. Like even the NBA is so, so much tougher than it looks. Like it's, it's tough. tough. I yeah. I I the crowd factor is really tough. I I was also thinking like the the right judges need to be in there because a lot of times it's like it's so subjective as you know, but it's like some people don't know about those tricks. I feel like the judges should know about those push-ups. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And there, I mean, if we're talking like NBA stuff, then yeah, like absolutely. Even though they're great people. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just like, <laughs> but yeah, they should be, well, the year, in 2018, uh, when Donovan won, like I, you know, I got to talk with a couple of the judges and be like, hey, like this is this or whatever. And mm -hmm. they did all right, but obviously mm -hmm. it was a couple. This year it was just, like you yeah know, like what can you do but judges that like mean something that like know more about dunking should definitely be there mm -hmm. uh but even like sometimes that doesn't work out so it's just like and they won't like if we're talking nba they're never gonna let you know kadorziani me t-dub go judge a dunk contest you know right. what i mean like but that's like something that maybe like dunk league can like facilitate. Yeah. yeah that's really cool um what was I about to say? I was about to ask. Oh yeah, so that uh, whole production it was with, with Vince Carter. Can we talk about that? I don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> we're, we're soon. I can't talk about that one. Okay, maybe <laughs> but, we'll have to come back. Yeah, we're gonna come back to that one. Like okay. in a couple of months, man. But mm. the, you know, those NDAs are <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, do you have any goals for the dunk world or anything you'd like to see happen um, in terms of maybe Olympics or any type of like progress towards that? Honestly, I think Olympics is the honestly, it's always been kind of the goal after I was like 25 or 26. That's always been the goal. Uh, I it's <laughs> I feel like, you know, managing some players and like just doing this whole thing. It's taken years off my life. So I'd like it to happen <laughs> as soon as possible. <laughs> But the Olympics is 100%, it's realistic, and it's a goal that's like achievable. It's just like being like right things happen, the FIBA contests and whatnot, because now it's like the same stuff over and over. I'd like to change like a couple things up if, if possible. But the Olympics is obviously a goal. I'd like to see it get to a point where this is, you know, we say dunk league made it into a sport, but right. I, I'd ultimately like to see it like actually become somewhat of a sport where players are taken care of on like a, on a salary basis. And like it, I started thinking like healthcare type of stuff too. Mm -hmm. Like I just, they're like, as I get older, I just, I'd like to see it be more of a profession than a hobby. And, yeah. and it's, it is a profession for what six to 10 guys. Yeah. I'd like to see that go to like 50 to 60 guys, almost like skateboarding. 
Yeah, I actually had the same exact analogy with skateboarding or actually MMA because the way MMA was like popular kind of like in the underground, that's kind of how I feel dunking is right now. And then eventually, like right now, it's it's so similar because MMA used to be in gyms like in the back corner. And now right now I'm dunking in between games at an LA fitness. But yeah. as MMA grew, it became its own gym. And now I'll tell you on the MMA point, uh, it, it'll bring me back to the dunk contest. And my good friend and the guy that kind of like really like helped me get into everything, his name's Anthony Potosa. He he worked for the UFC for a while. And I was like, we were talking about the NBA dunk contest. It was like, man, because Hami used one of his four dunks that we were going to use. He didn't use three of his dunks. Mm-hmm. Like, man, like how could we like facilitate like making this happen where everybody goes for it? And he was like, well, UFC has fight of the night, mm-hmm. you know, the, the performer of the night. So you can have the champion and you can have the dunk, of, you know, like the dunker yeah. of the night type of thing. Like if his score is fucked up because he messed or whatever, it can be like a different thing and have a purse for, you know, the best dunk of the night or whatnot. So for the Olympics, would it just be like a dunk contest similar to the NBA or would it be kind of like a new format? Like I, I would go new format with it for sure. Like obviously there'd be prelims and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then like the similar to what we do in dunk league, like props. Hey man, actually I'd be like, use your props, but we know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's like, I, I just like to definitely like with prelims, but just, kind of different like more more uh more opportunity but not as many attempts like if this is going to be a come on the olympic sport like we have to have guys doing 360 between the legs like every yeah. fucking time and that's like it's tough demand but that's like what we're going to need like, i mean need, yeah like, if we're talking olympic level i would say that's pretty standard yeah we need like we need like clarks and you know we need that kind of crap going on all the time clarks and myries and those freaks of nature you know yeah for sure man um that's pretty wild like i would love to see it in the olympics i definitely think it its own gym like it's going to be inevitable just because it's growing so much and i just think dunking as a as its own sport like you were mentioning is healthy because like you're saying with knees we all have bad knees it's like it takes your whole body it takes your mind it takes so many things that you need uh, like its own gym for it and you need to like you can't just dunk in between games you need a your own court where you're where you're allowed to film so you could critique your yeah freaking footwork i think it'd be great to have a dunk gym that would be awesome i, I completely agree i think the dunk camp uh what andy has going on is just like f- fucking phenomenal yeah. like that's something obviously it's been brought up like years and years ago but that's just not right like that's just not for me it's just really good to see like him like take over that and do like what he's doing that's like that's going in the right direction and Mm -hmm. that's like that's what needs to happen so this like continues to move forward because like if shit like that doesn't happen Mm -hmm. then we're just we're running on a treadmill so that's like a huge step towards it like it's awesome it's so awesome the dunk camp i'm so excited for this year it's just it's so awesome for the for us to meet up because we don't as as like all of us guys even though we live close we don't even meet up because we're on such different schedules and we're just all trying to train but it's also all the people that we talk about or see we get to all meet up and then it's also cool for kids that we we don't know about to show out and also get their first dunk it's just awesome um yeah with dunk camp uh what so so dunk camp is not really your thing but what is your goals what do you have any goals that are specific to you yeah i just honestly like the number one goal is just to be healthier and pain-free, be able to move around. Honestly, like six months ago, I was just like laying around. Well, when I was home, mm-hmm. I would just lay around and just like think about like, man, I would just love to run full speed right mm-hmm. now. Like I hadn't done that in years. Yeah. And I'm still like trying to build up to that. I'm still like mentally not ready. Um, but I to number one, just healthier. Like obviously I want to, I want to dunk again. Like I got, I got these guys going on. Here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> for sure. Uh, from, from trying, but it's just, yeah, I guess the ultimate goal is like to dunk, but just to be healthier, man. It, it, there, you don't, you don't know a wake up call like seeing yourself on TV and being like, fuck. <laughs> you yeah. know, like that's like, the, that's the bad one when you're like, man, what's going on right now? And then, yeah, I can't even post things. I can't even post throwback Thursdays from last year because I'm back. 
<laughs> Throw back Thursday. Um, any other goals outside of dunking or just life goals in general? Yeah, no, just be healthy, be happy. I'm, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm, a weird, I'm in a weird space now where it used to be like competition. It used to be like all this stuff. Although like competition still gets me going. And stuff, mm-hmm. But I'm just like, just want to be happy and i want this i want dunking to do well like i just want to be able to be like i helped like do something for that sure was big, that was bigger than just you know whatever i do for myself dude that's awesome i love that so dude it's what's crazy to me is that since even when me like you started before me but even when i was starting like there was not many short people dunking and now Mm -hmm. it seems like because of the internet so many younger kids are seeing it and starting so young (laughs) it's really they're like in high school jumping close to like upper 40s it's just wild um uh what do you think what what do you think of zion do you think he's going to be in the nba contest winning it easily or anything you know no i can do this now because i'm on contract so i can like say what i want but i, w- I had a conversation with one of the uh the nba execs the other day and it was like it's like somebody you know whatever like i don't know about you know maybe we won't go after zion or whatever and i was just like it's like that sounds ridiculous the dude's like yeah i know 100 percent, i I will go back to the college contest if Zion's not in the contest next yeah. year. So that's like 100% the goal. Wow. The goal next year, and I'll just I'll round it off for you real quick. This is what I want. I want six guys. Mm-hmm. I want it to be Zion, Hami, John ja Morant, Terrence Ferguson, Derek Jones. Oh, shit. We're, oh, no. My bad, job. Ja. Not John ja Morant. <laughs> See ya. Levine, Levine, Gordon, yeah. uh-huh. Jones, Zion, Hami, oh my God, Ferguson. That's it, what I want, and that's like, and you know, I'm there to suggest. You know, me and Chase are there to suggest things and like help out through the process and whatnot. But that in Chicago would be crazy. Yeah, like, bring bring back the 2002 format. Like just like the thought of that. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah mikey mikey hit me up the other day he was like dude it's so crazy when i thought you know when i saw zion declared all i could think was like man i'm so happy for chuck he's gonna get to work with this guy i was just like man i hope so bro i hope so um did so is zion the most explosive person you've ever seen best dunker at like his size i mean oh his size i've never seen anybody at his size like move around i know you gotta think like guys his size were like shaft yeah you know like you think like maybe rodney rogers but he didn't jump like zion like there's yeah. there's guys that like clarence weatherspoon i guess but he was like six <laughs> five and like 290 it was just like is that? Zion, every time he leaves the floor i like get nervous yeah just like, man be careful dude bro. Dude, yeah. what gets you most hype? Is and is it game dunks? Is it just like a new dunk landed? Is it just head over the rim? Just like something clean and crisp and powerful. Like to me, like if I if I close my eyes, like when you just said before you even asked the question, you're like, what gets you? Like I knew like you were gonna go mm-hmm. and dunk, and like the first thing that pops in my head is Vince Carter's three sixty window. Mm-hmm. Like just like something like clean, perfect enthusiasm crowd like yeah. that's it for me like it, game dunks are awesome but i'm a dunk contest guy yeah like that i just love that when somebody can take like a whole crowd put them in their hand and be like i am i know how good i am at this and i'm gonna show you and you're gonna think i'm the coolest guy <laughs> and they just go do it and it's yeah. just like it's the most beautiful thing to me. like that shit just like gets me a different way, bro. <laughs> yeah, True. yeah, yeah. So you said I meant you. I heard you mention bring it back to the 2002 format. I'm not familiar with that. What is the difference? Just three dunks in the first round, two in the finals. I feel like right now two and two is been like doing the players justice of what they could do. I uh, even did three three dunks in the first round, two in the drop the worst score that they had in the first round. So it'd be like if somebody missed. They could drop that score and use yeah. the other two scores. So right. I feel like that would be a little a little better for the guys. 
what's wild about those people that you name to be in the contest is that like it seems like especially i i think aaron gordon sticks out to me as like he's kind of like adopting the dunk culture like even when he was in high school like he's trying like he tried to under both over like he looks like he's watching the community as well the, the crazy thing with aaron is that i don't know like a couple of people know this but not too many but in 2016 he only made that dunk one time the under both over someone he only made it one time and he tried it over a hundred times right? wow and he made it the first time in that contest so that contest was just special yeah like, that but was aaron's always been you know he came up in like the the tfb the hoop mixtape the yay area's finest era the yeah. ball's light era so that guy was like studying dunks and there's even like articles of him being like i watched dunkademics and team flight brothers and yeah. stuff and it's just like damn bro like that's super dope and now he's like you know texting in december be like hey man might need some dunks and shit so yeah that yeah. dude it's really cool to see the nba guys do it if the thing is with that contest it, like those six guys do it and they have like an amazing contest they're all trying like crazy stuff that we know as a dunk community but the world doesn't really know i feel like that'll help spark the its own sport yeah i mean for sure it, but it's like sometimes the guys are like very outspoken about it and being like i didn't do this first like this person did but yeah sometimes they're not yeah so it's like that's what we need like this year you know with homie like the contest was eh, he did his thing mm -hmm. he was super vocal he was like yeah man like this is what i did you know whatever donovan you know just like talking about it and stuff during the contest uh glenn and it's just like there's certain people that just need to be like yeah man this this is who helped me out or this is where i got the inspiration for it if if say i don't even know just say like best case couple olympics from now i don't even know just say there's like prelim starting could you fathom some nba players that are going to go that route like kind of like that made it to the nba and now they see dunking as like something that they love as a part of it or the nba is too much for them i mean i don't it just depends on like what they're doing if they're like a g-leaguer then yeah absolutely yeah. like the times have changed like before when team flight brothers started it was an outlet for basketball players that were freak athletes that mm -hmm. needed a second chance to you know be on a basketball court to get paid now you got you know all you guys are freaking you went to college you know isaiah is in college like these you guys have your education and whatnot like this isn't a this isn't a cop out. This is what you guys want to do. Mm. So I can absolutely see that happening. Like there's a couple guys that I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't they go to the Olympics and just like make this money? Like if it yeah. happened today, there would yeah. be a couple guys in there and it'd be like, fuck, they're <laughs> don't, you know, pro dunkers might be in trouble. Yeah. It's pretty wild that, uh, like to think in the future like i don't know however however long like just people growing up as like that's their sport just like we're talking about mma and they go to contests they go to tournaments and it'll be like dunk tournaments and they can just kind of go that route um i also I mean, had this thought it's i know happen. it's it's weird it's gonna be awesome anyway i had this other thought that was random what about you th what do you think about a league that kind of uh, has a height requirement and then you all dunk on lower rims <laughs> like uh like for under six feet people there's like a nine and a half foot hoop or something like that i'm fucking in man <laughs> <laughs> just, there we go yeah just give me like a year bro I'm dude in, that man. would be so that, fun because yeah that would be awesome well they have that baby dunk on Instagram, yeah and that's like super dope that's yeah. like that's what we used to do in, yes you know, in middle school and high school it's just going saturday is just no dunk on the kids that drank beer and shit but, <laughs> like, yeah i mean i had the same yeah, thing but yeah that, i mean anything that's involving like that surrounding dunk as the main objective has my like 100 percent go like, yeah just right man that's awesome. Back to those freak athletes that you talked about. You just found these guys that were freak athletes. Were there any that like stood out as like that looked like they would never be able to jump or just had no training ethic at all or work ethic and they could just fly at any contest? Fucking T Doug, man. Yeah. The goat. That dude that dude, I will tell you what, I was around him for years and he you know, oh, he'll see this. You know, that's my guy. <laughs> I, I love that I love that guy to death, man. And he Me too. He he uh he just back in the day he smoked cigarettes he you know whatever and he's just he, i never saw this dude work out a day in his life but to this day he's like the most phenomenal thing i've ever seen just 
I don't know what happened. But there, there's like actually, I guess it's genetic. There's legendary stories about his dad and stuff, like that his dad could like really, you know, hang on eleven feet and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, but he literally, I never saw him. He would just chill all the time. Yeah, and then Dude. also Bama, Air Bama, who has gone through three ACL surgeries. Two on, I think, his left and one on his right. That dude would sleep before, like, shows, and then he'd go, like, hit his face on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, he, it's, there's just some guys that just, I guess, you know, are blessed with it. Yeah. But T-Dub's definitely at the top of the list. Man. Yeah, <laughs> like, dude. Yeah. I think that's a great place to go. I mean, just just watching your videos was actually probably the first thing I saw that ever, like, opened my eyes, that there's freaks like that. Like, I remember... I like Andy Nicholson since he was my height, white dude, starting at the same. He showed him just touching rim to dunking. That yep. was like probably what sparked me, like, believe I could do it. But T Dub, mm -hmm. like, the first time I saw it, like, broke my brain and just was that was always my dream before I even knew it was possible. And I, I also just, just got to say thank you for uploading those videos because, god <laughs> damn, I still watch those. I just watched it like a week ago, his in game dunks. And oh, man. I think you were throwing the lobs. And it's just like. Those dunks, I can't even imagine doing that still. And I'm not, I'm kind of close to it, but still, that's literally my dream. When everybody, anybody asks me my dunk goals, I you're say, getting, just look up T-Dub. You're getting there. Yeah. Man. You're getting <laughs> trying. There. I'm trying. I mean, you've come a long way. Like, yeah. I remember, I remember when you first like started uploading your videos. I remember seeing, I think, your first dunk off uh, you were left foot, right hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, good for this guy. And then, like, years later, I'm like, this is the same. This is the same. Yeah, I mean, he yeah. brought he brought that. I've always had like that aggression in me, but then when I watch the way he dunked, dude, every time I go up is like I just try to take off like that and just well, dunk you, like that. You do it on your off the backward ones. You do the yeah. same like look away. Oh man, <laughs> and I it's just, just like yeah, it's really dope. And I. You know, I just saw T Dub two weeks ago for the first time in six years. Yeah. Uh, and we hadn't talked to, like until last year for four of them. Uh, and it was just like, it wasn't even like disagreements or anything like that. It was just like both going like our separate ways type of thing. And, you know, he still looks like he's in shape. So <laughs> it's like, please. And, but here's the thing is that his lifestyle has changed like, big time you know he's got two like beautiful kids like mm -hmm. he's and he's like prioritized prioritized a lot differently mm -hmm. so what i'm saying is that he told me he's ready so i'm hoping that he gets Dude. his ass down here and we get ready because i don't there's not a lot of guys that i'll open my house to now because yeah. i used to open it to those maniacs back in the yeah. day <laughs> i think i have like ptsd from them but <laughs> If he, you know, he knows that he is more than welcome down here, and he, you know, he's said that he's down to do it. So that's like, you know, dude, he's, 30, he's thirty-two, so dude. he's it's more than doable. Yeah, if he's if he ever gives you the green light, let me know, and I'll be down there in a minute. And dude, <laughs> sure. that was Short like. Drive. Yeah, it's not even – it's just crazy how, like, just him playing in a game, watching those highlights, like, could inspire me so much. I never even met him. But just, like, the way he finishes and, like, the hype. Like, I remember that in-game duck. I just watched it. He just, like, catches a pass, does a little, like, drop step. Like, he sneaks a pass in and then, like, just takes a little hop step, two hands. I hear him go, ha, ah, just, like, at the top. It's just, like, even for a basic dunk against whoever, it's just, like, that's how I would be every time I dunk it. It's, it's easy. And everything about T-Dub, like – you know, he does the thing. He's like greatest dunker of all time, greatest dunker in the world and stuff. There was literally for a, a period of time, there was everything that he did in the air and even not in the air that made him, you know, goat area. Mm -hmm. And that's even with TJ, even with Guy, like even with everybody. There was just his swag is different. Mm -hmm. Most different dude you'll ever meet in your life. <laughs> and But it's like, just like the shit he did in the air you it was it just never got like normal to me I yeah because a lot of things like get normal i see i would see geek go behind the back over a fucking truck or something yeah. and i'm just like yeah i'm used to that shit now yeah he, or tito would just be like 
be like, how the fuck did that just happen? It yeah. just didn't look real, man. So, I, yeah. I mean, they still fuel me because I see those things and that's all. I just want to do that for like a period of a couple months, just have those type of games and just that's it. I've seen a couple of them, man. I've seen a couple. You made the, you made the TFB year in like 2007. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm trying to make it this year. We'll see. Um, you can do one this year. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe by the uh, <laughs> anyway. That I think that's it, man. I really appreciate your time. It's been a while. It was really great getting to know you a little bit. Um, I definitely would love to have you back. Uh, is there anything else you'd want to say? Anything you want to shout out? Anything you want to leave yeah, with? I just, you know, I just like hope every everybody just keeps pushing this forward. Uh, just fucking stay humble. Don't be yeah. assholes, <laughs> and just like work at it. Support each other and whatnot. Uh, you know, don't don't be don't be overly selfish once when everybody does well you know then things are better right, right. if it's just one person doing all right and doing really good it's not going to work out you got to think about you know 10 years from now uh how you like helping somebody else out is going to get this sport so just leave a legacy you know you be better than you were yesterday mm-hmm I love it. Thanks a lot, man. Um, I was going to say, if you get a dunk down, are you going to be posting it? Nah, man. Come on. Post of course it. I'm going to post it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, I've been posting the same throwback Thursday for like four fucking years. Man. I love I know it. The people, I know the people that don't like them either. So yeah. Shout out to you. I'm I actually, I'm not a fan. I'll like it, but I, I'm not a fan of those throwbacks because I'm like, is this new or not? And then it, it just feels nah, like, ah, you got me. Nah. Not nah, fam. I yeah. know, you know what? I know who it pisses off. Yeah. That's why I do it. So I, I like it. I love it. All right, Chuck, right. man. We'll talk soon, brother. I really appreciate it. It's my, my pleasure, man. Take it easy. Hey, yo, I'm easily fascinated. I'm feeling so creative. It's your boy, Stevie. I'm a planet Earth native. I'm enjoying all the moments because it's such a thrill living. And I'm not sure if you notice, listen up, we're still spinning. Uh.